Celebrity Lie Detector Live. My name is Janine Driver. Welcome back. You may have taken a little break. Now let's put you through a quiz. Can you detect deception? This is a show that I was on a couple of years ago and I'm gonna put you through the test as if you were me. I'm gonna play this video first. This gentleman, Donnie Deutsch, had a television show on CNBC called The Big Idea. And man, I love this show. I'm sad that it went off the air. It was fascinating. It was a show about how people came up with really big ideas and became incredibly successful. I loved it. I watched it all the time. And I have a little secret crush on Donnie Deutsch. In this episode, what you're going to see is Donnie's going to tell me three stories. The first story is going to be about the first place he ever lived away from home. He's going to tell us sleepaway camp and then college. The second story I ask him is about uh, the uh, thing that drives him nuts. The thing that drives him crazy, his biggest pet peeve. He's going to say something along the lines of people who are late, people who are cheap, and people who smell bad. Um, and, and if he had to pick one, it's people who are late. It drives him nuts. And story three is the nicest thing someone ever said to, his father ever said to him. I had looked up online that he was very close to his father. And so I brought up his dad, nicest thing your father ever said to you. Now, Donnie did not get to pick which story he would be telling the truth about, which two stories he'd tell the truth about, and which one he would lie about. I wrote one, two, and three on a piece of paper and simply had him pick the piece of paper. Whichever story he picked he would have to lie about seconds later. So he could not be prepared for a lie. So it is not a well-rehearsed lie. Also, in order to catch someone lying, there has to be a consequence. In these fun little games that you do, even Joe Navarro, retired FBI agent, told me once on a plane that he would never do this ever on national television because there's no real consequence for this game. And he wouldn't put his reputation on the line. So here, I met Joe Navarro um, during this taping at The Big Idea. He was on a segment at the same time. I think he was on after my segment. So here's what happens with Donnie Deutsch. He's going to tell me two stories that are true, one that's a lie. In order for me to create a consequence, I had to do a lot of research in advance. And what I found out is Donnie Deutsch was thinking of running for mayor of New York City. I've trained the FBI, CIA, Scotland Yard Police, law enforcement across the globe. So when I started talking with Donnie, I said to him, hey, I read online you're thinking of running for, for mayor of, of, the, of New York City. Is this true? Had you been there, you would have heard Donnie say, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about it. I go, my gosh, I used to live here at 70, 77th and 2nd and 95th and 3rd when I worked at the World Trade Center for the federal government for ATF years ago, two years before 9-11 happened. And uh, if I still lived in New York, I would totally have voted for you. I would have totally voted for you. Uh, and he goes, oh, thank you. I'd well, unless. And I go, forget it, forget it. And he goes, unless what? As I started walking away. I go, well, unless you're such a good liar that someone that teaches the CIA how to detect deception and the FBI and Scotland Yard Police, if someone that can teach them how to detect deception was unable to bust you in a lie, then you're the last person I would want to vote for because you're from advertising, maybe you're just a master manipulator and liar, and you're not able to tell the truth. Even in a game, you can't reveal the truth. And so I give these embedded commands about revealing the truth. I tell him that he's not gonna be trustworthy if I can't bust him. And what I did is I created stress and anxiety for him. He goes, oh, I didn't even think of that. I go, oh yeah, imagine the commercials they're gonna make. Donnie Deutsch is such a good liar, master manipulator, even a chick that teaches the CIA can't bust him in a lie. I go, I'm going to catch you, though. Don't worry about it. I'm really good at what I do. I, don't, don't stress out, Donnie. Don't stress out. Don't even worry about it. You know, you just, you know, tell the truth when you're supposed to tell the truth. And all these embedded commands, worry about it, worry about it, worry about it, because we don't hear don't, and tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth. So let's see. I'm going to play the video. It's about two minutes long. Can you spot where Donnie Deutsch is lying to me? It is an important show if you want to get an upper hand in business and anything in life. We're showing you how to get the upper hand by reading the tells people give off and what they say and how they say it. And my next guest is going to teach us how to spot when someone's lying. She was able to spot when I was lying. I don't do that often. We did that as part of an exercise. We'll show you that. Body language expert, Janine Driver, welcome to The Big Idea. Hi, Donnie. Great to be here. Well, this is fascinating because, this is, as I said, this is an important show in that what we're going to break down here is you have ways, foolproof ways, 
of if somebody is not shooting straight. So if anybody out there, if you're in a business negotiation, any situation, what to look for when someone is not being straight up. And right. we did a little exercise with me. First of all, your background, law enforcement, basically? Yeah, yeah. I taught law enforcement for 14 years, federal, state, local, the United States and Canada. And three years ago, I took those skills over to the dating and business world. Okay. You know, what are we hiding from others? You know, whether, like you said, whether it's sales and marketing, even a hiring manager, looking at a resume, what's the truth behind the resume? Sure. You know, the big picture on how to read. Fascinating. What okay. people hold it so what, tell, we're going to show somebody a little exercise we did. We went through about an hour or so ago. What, what, tell me, tell everybody what we did. You're not a good liar. Because you are just, you're too adorable, you're too straight up. <laughs> so what I did is I asked you a series of questions. I asked you three questions. I had you randomly pick a number, one to three. So you wouldn't know which one you'd lie about. So you randomly picked one number. At that point, that's the one you had to lie about. I asked you the three questions and I busted you, you as did. you know. So what people are going to see now is, once again, she asked me three questions. I picked out and in my thing it said, okay, I knew I was going to lie which question. She didn't know. Let's take a look at that tape and then we're going to come back and Janine's going to break it down, how she busted me, the one question I wasn't being honest about. Number one, describe the first place you ever lived away from home. The first place I ever lived away from home, I guess it was sleep by camp. It was, I hated it. I cried when I went to camp for the summer. I was a big sissy. I hated it. But that was the first place I lived. And then college was the next place I lived. Number two, what drives you mad? Biggest pet peeve? Uh, you know, a body odor, um, people who are cheap, and also people who are late. They're all three come back to selfishness. Um, and, you know, I just, when you said, ask me what makes you mad, cheapness doesn't, if that's when somebody's late. That's right. But cheapness is a quality I just hate in people. And number three is what's the nicest thing your father ever said to you? I remind him of his father. I know that sounds a little strange, but. Okay. So tell me about it. Why is that a nice thing? Because his father, he always, growing up, he would always tell me that his father was his idol and that he, you know, his father was strong and his father was brave. His father was a cop, a New York City cop, okay. and could do anything. And I always got a sense that my father looked up to his father. Okay. So when even as a young boy, he told me, I reminded him of his father, it, it was the ultimate compliment to me. Why are you smiling? Because it's just a nice, it's a, it's just, it's a nice story as I'm thinking about it. You're adorable. Thank You're you. completely adorable. So okay. Yeah. Thank you. So sure. let's recap. So first place you ever lived away from home was? Sleepwalking. Okay. And what drives you mad? Biggest pet peeve? Uh, you know, a, body odor. Um people who are cheap and also people who are late. And as we talked about, they're all three come back to selfishness. Um, and, you know, I just, when you said, ask me, what makes you mad? Cheapness doesn't, if that's when somebody's late, that's fine. But cheapness is a quality I just hate in people. And the nicest thing your father ever said to you? Um, when he told me that I reminded him of his father, uh, it was after Little League game. All right. So that's what I'm going to tell you. Uh, what do you think? I'm going to let you guys vote here on Facebook Live. If you're watching on YouTube, just simply write down which number do you think it is and what's making you think that? Is it just a vibe you have? Uh, is it something he said? Is it something he did? Which story was it? One, two, or three, which one do you think is the lie? So write it down. Which one do you think is the lie? One, two, or three? One, two, or three, and what makes you say one, two, or three? Which one is the lie? Two of them are truthful, one is a lie, and there's several ways that you can spot which one is the lie. This was really easy. I think it was easy because I had primed Donnie's brain to tell me the truth. I also primed him that if he could not be busted, there would be a consequence that he had not considered otherwise. So it's not like he had thought about that for a long time. I'm like, oh, these fun little games, it's so fascinating to me that people are willing to do them so easily. And he's like, you know, what are you talking about? So just constantly hitting and hammering him on there's still a consequence even if it's a game. So which one do you think is the lie? A, B, or C? All right, I'm waiting for some votes to come in. Uh, I'm not seeing votes just yet. Maybe people are falling asleep. Believe me, I'm about, I'm going to sleep at my office tonight. I'm so tired. All right. So you may have seen it because I gave it away. Hello, Janine. I forgot to put the slide. I think I mixed up the slides. This was supposed to be the second slide. So three is in fact the lie. So it's good. Oh, I see Paula came in at number one. So three is the lie. When he asked about him, he was laughing. Oh, there's a lot happening there with three, right? So we'll explore it in a second here. So if you're watching, three was the lie. I lit it up 
in red. Biggest pet peeve. Uh, you, let's go over each story now one at a time. So here's story one. Here Biggest we go. Biggest pet peeve. Uh, you know, a body odor. Biggest pet peeve. Uh, you know, a body odor. Biggest pet peeve. Uh, you know, a body odor. Biggest pet peeve. Uh, you know, a body odor. Biggest pet peeve. Uh, you know, a body odor. Okay, I want to point out this palm out gesture that Don, Donnie's making. The first place I ever lived. Back it up. Biggest pet peeve. Uh, you know, a body. Okay. So now he says body odor. It's interesting for Donnie because he's not, he actually, I say biggest pet peeve, he gives me three, right? He says what? Cheapness. People are late in body odor, but he has, to, he has to really think about what drives them bad. It's people who are late. <laughs> His behavior there is congruent, though. If he was going to lie to me, he's probably more apt to give me one answer. Your biggest pet peeve, people who put the toilet paper on wrong. Um, so right out of the gate, giving me several answers made me feel like, okay, this possibly could be the truth because he's not answering my question. He's giving me three, his top three. So made me believe there was his top three. You can see he's shaking his head no here. And I think this sometimes can give people the wrong impression that he's being deceptive. Biggest pet peeve, uh, you know, a body odor. Sometimes, first place I am. sometimes that shaking the head no, uh, I just want to let you know, is, uh, huh, like, uh, you know, it could be unbelievable or well, I don't really know. I think I'm down to a couple. So when we see someone's nonverbals like that, understand there's an internal conversation happening at the same time. It doesn't mean what he's saying now is a lie because he's shaking his head no. I think that's a big myth that either A, body language experts are telling you, or B, you're somehow getting that information somewhere. It's just simply not true. Someone shaking their head left to right does not mean they're lying to you and when they're giving you a direct answer. It could just be, uh, I don't really know. I don't know how to narrow this down. All right, so the palms out. When we face our palms out, this is the number one move truthful people will do. The problem is now liars know about it, and so when they're telling you a story, they'll often do their palms out. So this palms out, what I'm talking about is this move here. Oh, a body odor? Right there. So they'll show you their palms of their hands. Think of you if you were held up by a, a, a burglar or the police, you put your hands over your head and show them your palms. So this right here is that vulnerability. It's I'm telling you the truth. Okay, let's go to the next story, number two. The first place I ever lived away from home, I guess was sleeping at camp. It was, I hated it. I cried when I went to camp for the summer. I was a big sissy, but I hated it. But that was the first place I lived. And then college was the next place I lived. All right, so now let's explore what happens here uh, with Donnie. He gets a little fidgety here, right? The first place I ever lived away from home, I guess. All right, so I'm wanting to show, point out a couple things for you. Again, Donnie gives me two answers. So again, I'm thinking, ah, oh, this one's probably right. This probably is truthful because I'm saying the first place you ever lived away from camp, from home and he's giving me two answers. Liars, when they're lying, want to um, get in and out of that lie. You know, they're trying to convince you that this one place is the place they lived. So they'll tend to go really deep on one area. They're not gonna give you, basically he's giving us like two alibis. He's giving us two stories. And the liar tries to their best um, to tell one story and, and um, stick with it, if possible. At least good liars are gonna try to tell you the least amount of information as possible. Uh, this right here giving me two answers when I'm asking for one uh, I felt again was indicative and congruent with his first story so so far the two two questions are being answered very similarly with multiple answers the third one though is out of character right from the first two because the third one is the nicest thing your father who I know is his best friend on earth ever said to you he doesn't say well I'd say these three things you know I'd narrow it down to these three or he said this and then this no he tells us one line um, so it's a deviation in his baseline. Let's look what else is happening body language wise in story two that indicates it's likely to be truthful. Sleep I can't. It was, I hated it. I crawled. The first place I ever lived away from home, I guess, sleep I can't. He says, I guess. Um, liars will tend not to use such squishy language as I guess. They want you to be believe them. So they're not going to say, ah, I guess um, there were no girls there at the party tonight. They're going to say, no, there were no girls at the party tonight. If I said, did you ever steal money from work? Uh, you're going to say, no, or absolutely not, or what kind of person do you think I am? Or I knew this was going to happen to me. Just ask my friends. They'll tell you I would never steal money from work. Um, they're not going to say, I don't think I haven't. I, 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 you know, I, I guess I probably have followed all the rules. You know, Have you ever 
um, do you play the game, you know, legit? You know, do you, do you train and train the game, train for the game, and you're drug free? I guess, yeah, I guess I'm drug free. I guess you could say I'm drug free. Wouldn't you agree? That would be suspicious, right? So right here, he's saying what? Hold on, listen. Yeah, it was. I hated it. I cried. The first place I ever lived away from home, I guess, was sleepaway camp. So right here, this is. He's not trying to convince me uh, that it was sleepaway camp. It's so squishy here. It was, I hated it. I cried when I went to... Again, he's nodding his head no here. Keep in mind, this is internal dialogue where it's like, what, imagine winning a, watching a sporting event and the team wins. Oftentimes, you'll see people shaking their head like, unbelievable. Like, I can't even believe I went. I hated that place, man. Or I can't even believe I'm telling you the story. Camp for the summer. I was a big sissy, but I hated it. But that was the first place I lived. And then college was the next place I lived. I hated it. I cried when I went to camp for the summer. I was a big sissy, now he's smiling here, which could be an indicative of deception. But I hated it. But, that, but I want, but I hated it. Watch this. Watch what his thumbs do. But that was the first place I lived. And then, and then it, they come up again. Watch. When I went to camp for the summer. I was a big sister. Watch his thumbs but, come up. But I hated it. I remember, okay, hold on. But I hated it. Let's do it one more time. The first place I ever lived away from home, I guess, was sleeping camp. It was, I hated it. I cried Watch when I went thumbs. to camp in the summer. I was a big sissy, but I hated it. Right but there. that was the first place I lived. And then college was the next place I lived. So, and it thumbs come up twice with college and the sleepaway camp. So, thumbs coming up, it's defying gravity. <clears throat> it's like the Earth's gravity can't hold him down. And this tends to be excitement. Joe Navarro, retired FBI agent, who also is a body language expert, talks about in poker, it's likely this person has a good hand. As a matter of fact, Joe would be the first one to tell you in poker, sometimes you'll see people put their fists underneath their chin. So they'll put two hands in a fist and rest their chin on, uh, on their hands as the, the, the hand is being dealt and everyone's kind of getting their cards and the game's coming along. And once the cards are out and in play, uh, the person that thinks they have a great hand if their hand is in a fist, two fists underneath their chin, uh, they may go up on their thumbs. So they may put their thumbs underneath their chins. And this is a good indicator that they probably have, think they have a really good hand, a hot hand. So we see these thumbs coming up. This is a positive cue. So if you're a negotiator, if you're in sales and someone's thumbs are coming up, this is where the truth lies. This is where someone's excited about something. Now it could be Donnie Deutsch could be excited here. Just uh, he's getting through the two stories like, oh, that was easy and get geared up for the last story, right? Which is the lie. So let's see what happens here. I remind him of his father. I know it sounds a little strange, but. Okay. So tell me about it. Why is that a nice thing? Because his father, he always, growing up, he would always tell me that his father was his idol and that he, you know, his father was strong and his father was brave. His father was a cop, a New York City cop. Okay. And could do anything. And I always got a sense that my father looked up to his father. Okay. So when even as a young boy, he told me, I reminded him of his father, it, it was the ultimate compliment to me. Why are you smiling? Because it's just a nice, it's a, it's just, it's a. Oh my gosh, this is so loaded with deception. All right, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go back to the beginning here. I remind him of his father. I know it sounds a little strange, but. Okay. So tell me about it. Why is that a nice thing? Because his father, he always grew up. You leak a little contempt of here. His father. That sounds a little strange, but. Tell me about it. Why is that a nice? Because his father, he was growing up, he would always. So look at his palm. So his palm here, right now it's coming out, but it's facing himself a lot. Watch. His right hand's in a fist. Watch. I remind him of his father. I know it sounds a little strange, but. Okay. So tell me about it. Why is that a nice? Thing? Because. His father, he always, growing up, he would always tell me that his father was his idol and that he, you know, his father was strong and his father was brave. His father was a cop, a New York City cop, okay. and could do anything. And I always got a sense that my father looked up to his father. Okay. So when even as a young boy, he told me, I reminded him. Let's look at this palm towards himself. Even when as a young boy, when he told me, I remind him of his father. Um, the palm is coming out to himself right here. Watch. Uh, I said to him, um, story three is the lie, but your dad's dad was a New York City cop. And he goes, yes, how do you know that? I'm like, uh, because I'm the OG when it comes to body language. Okay. So when even as a young boy, he told me, See, look at this. I reminded him of his father. His father. It, it was the ultimate compliment to me. Why are you smiling? Because it's just a... Okay, now I bust him. 
So uh, I always say when building rapport, do you want to be right or do you want to be effective? Be careful of using a why question. You can see I'm really young here. I don't even know when this was, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, be very careful of whys. Why questions make people feel judged. But I was flirting with Donnie Deutsch so, bad, so much so that I don't think the why is that bad here for me with Donnie? However, today I try to ask what and how questions and stay away from those whys. Look what happens though. He falls apart when I question them here. Because it's just a nice... Dimples galore. Look at that. It's so cute. And he says, because it's just, it's a good question or, or it's a good memory, but he shoulder shrugs, which is inconsistent with the good memory. It's just a nice, it's a, it's just, it's a nice story. Is it? You see this shrug? That shrug is uncertainty. We see this with liars a lot. It's a nice story, as I'm thinking about. Okay. All right, let's move on. The number one move people do when they're being honest or they feel comfortable around you is they're showing you your pawn, their pawns, their pawns. Uh, also, uh, research shows that if you are talking to people and you show your palms to them while talking, you're more apt to elicit the truth from them. Uh, child therapists know this when they work with sex cases uh, with the little kids. You'll often see them talk in a very simple kid voice and put their palms out very dramatically so. And then what happened? And they'll put their palms out. Um, we can see a lot of interviewers, interviewers doing this move to elicit the truth from us and get more information from us. This is a good friend of mine, the COO of Mortgage Bankers Association, Marsha, who I love dearly, and she interviews people for her show on Mortgage Bankers Association um, video podcast, and you'll often see her use that palm up gesture as she's talking to people to get them to tell them more. All right, here's a bonus. Let's go back to Donnie Deutsch. Did you hear something in there that might have been suspicious? I want to point out Donnie's big old butt. Did you hear the butt? I want you to pay attention when people say the word butt. Let's listen to Donnie say it in story number three, which was the lie. Liars often will use this butt. I know you think I'm making this up, but I know you're going to think I'm lying, but I know you think uh, I did this, but I know you think I'm cheating, but. Watch your big butts. Where, listen to Donnie where he puts his big butt in here. What's the nicest thing your father ever said to you? I remind him of his father. I know that sounds a little strange, but. Okay. What's the nicest thing your father ever said to you? I remind him of his father. I know that sounds a little strange, but. Okay. Why would that sound strange at all? I mean, so your father is saying you remind him of his father. That's anything but strange. That's actually probably the most normal answer and you would think most likely answer. Uh, so it's not strange. When he tells us this is strange, I know it sounds strange, but that's another big alarm that went off here for me. And then of course his smiling, which is connected with duping delight. But we see him smiling a lot through all the questions. Uh, at, uh, maybe next Celebrity Lie Detector Live, episode 10. I'll tell you another story about my flirting with Donnie Deutsch and how it got me into some serious trouble and what I did to get out of that trouble. And it'll blow your mind. It's how to get out of a difficult situation with the people in your life who love you when you messed up. So remind me, I'll, I'll talk about it hopefully in the next episode, number, nine, number 10, next week. Here's another blue streak. You can't unsee those palm out gestures. All right, we're in the final stretch, and we've got to get to this case of this young missing girl soon in Houston, Texas. We're getting there soon. My name's Shanine Driver. Thanks for tuning in. I'm the Celebrity Lie Detector live every Wednesday night.